I've got the best of me, but he says to me, Johnny, he says, what's that? I says, that's the hot on bush. I put it up there, and why did you, what's it for, he says? Well, I says, oh, that is to bring me in good luck tonight. And to keep the fairies out, I said, so I put this, I won't be taken out of the bed tonight, I said, and wake up outside it, in the back <laughs> of the place. You're not serious, he says to me. I am, I said to him. I said, that's true. And, uh, I think he says it's time for me to go. <laughs> I get now for afraid of you. <laughs> To me, uh, it's actually a symbol of hope. Um, we use it as our logo in the network. Um, and I love the way that it, it bends, um, especially in County Clare, it bends over. So I think it's a very strong tree. It's, a, it's also a very symbolic plant because it's, um, it was a symbol of fertility um, a long time ago. Um, so it has so many connotations um, and so many beautiful things that, that we can kind of draw from and, and, and take from and respect. The hawthorn symbolically and personally resonates on my heart. I um, find it beautiful. So I consider hawthorn to be really special medicine because it does work on the heart on all sorts of levels, but there's just this special time where you've got to make the commitment to go and make it as well. You know, you've got to take time out from your life to go and do that at that time of year. It won't wait for you. And there are traditions of it being associated with love and the May Blossom and I always think of those beautiful flowers as being nature's confetti. I've got absolutely no evidence at all <laughs> that this is where confetti came from but it's those lovely little round petals that just fall on you and, and I really consider it to be the wedding tree so yeah I love Hawthorne. <laughs> I've always been fascinated, it's hard not to be fascinated by that then, but by thorn, by, because it's such a beautiful tree in, in May every year, it's, it's, it's glorious you know. It's such a beautiful flower when you look at it up close and because it's a subfamily of the apple, to me it actually the, the berries look like tiny apples but the flowers look like tiny little faces or, or almost like little tiny roses. Uh, come May, or depending on how the weather's running, you will get an explosion of blossoms in the, the, the white thorns, I think, at that time of year. Uh, around the beginning of May, maybe late April, maybe just a little bit. And it's magnificent because basically what it is doing is it's, it's trumpeting the arrival of, of, of early summer or late spring and it's just gorgeous. And it's a wonderful indicator of the movement of the seasons. If you go to the far end of it then, when it becomes the hawthorn as I think of it, it's absolutely heavy with berries. I've come across ones that are practically bending with berries, giving something back to the birds and everything else. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a very kind tree. And that the kids years ago would um, get the unopened flowers and they would eat them between leaves and it was known as bread and cheese and it was a, a little snack that sustained them maybe on their way back from school. That when when these were in, in blossom and in leaf, that this was something if you were travelling, you could just pick these and there was a little meal or a snack for yourself on the way. Bread and cheese. The hawthorn is very special medicine, um, even in terms of eating it, the, the leaves really, they're only at their best as a food, as a succulent food for about a week. After that, they un it's when they're just beginning to unfurl, the leaves are tender and they're succulent and that's the time to eat them. Once they've opened up, they become dry and the flavour's not there, it's just as they're unfurling, they've got a completely different flavour. So many parts of, of the white thorn, or you know, the hawthorn as they call it, um, are edible. The leaves, the flowers, and the berries. And I use all parts of it. Um, there's a lovely story that goes when all fruit fails, haws. So I suppose I love the abundance of the haws in the autumn because nobody seems to use the haw berries. Um, 
but I make a lovely syrup from them. Um, and of course, it's a, it's a healthy syrup. It's good for your heart. The, the, the tradition, that was the tradition there on May Eve. And uh, what I learned from my parents and from all the neighbours around here. And May Eve was, was, was a very particular evening on the, on, before May Day. And this was the evening that everything took place. Like, I remember my mother, she used to take in the heart out. out a, a branch of the hot hardened bush. They brought it in inside. This was to, this was to bring good luck. Um, so the tradition of having a May bush, for example, um, at Bialtana, that would have meant going out, cutting a branch, putting it in the ground, outside the house or in the middle of a crossroads and then people would have danced around the May bush. They'd have decorated it maybe with you know eggshells left over from decorated eggs at Easter, bits of ribbons, the kind of stuff you'd have around the house because people didn't have tinsel and you know all the plastic crap that we've got nowadays that we decorate things with. So you would have used whatever you had to hand um, that's what folk tradition is about. And um, so it would have been gorgeous, you know, and it would have been either just a green branch or a branch with flowers. These ribbons hanging on the bush, you could, you could see a connection between those and the tradition of a clouty well. A, a clouty well being a well with a tree growing close by it, where people would have in the past torn off a strip of their clothing and hung it on the bush if they were sick. And the the theory being that as the the rag, you know, they were sometimes called a rag well, um, as the rag deteriorated and disintegrated, the, the sickness would also dissipate over that time. So, and that was all very well when we wore cotton or linen or whatever and things that would rot away. Unfortunately, at a lot of these old clouty wells, people take, you know, hang bits of plastic bag these days. That's not going to work, you know, <laughs> that's, that's just not going to work. My neighbours still put a little sprig of, of white thorn um, outside my door on May Eve and I absolutely love all those amazing traditions that are still carried on, I think, in rural Ireland. Um, you'll often find um, in the folk tradition stories of treasure being hidden under, under a hawthorn tree and um, you know, gold. And when people would go looking for that, if, if they disturbed the tree, then something, you know, something untoward would happen to them. If they, if they disturbed it kind of unintentionally, it might just be, you know, pricks from thorns or, you know, a bit of bruising or something like that. But if, if you were intentionally going to damage the tree or to cut down, uh, a white thorn tree, particularly if it was growing on a fairy fort, then really awful things have been said to happen. Um, one particular man spoken of in a bit of story was blinded um, by by hawthorn thorns. Um, someone else, when they went with an axe to chop down a hawthorn tree, is reputed to have seen blood oozing from the tree and have run off in fright. So, you know, just a, a warning, really. You know, there... Um, powerful spirit in the hawthorn tree. 
sometimes I find that find it hard to believe it myself. You know, but I do know, I do know that there's other, there's other things there in the world. So I do, I, I do know that. Fairy Fort then would be an old um, ring fort, but often at a certain point, people would have planted trees on them. Now, you'll often see a, a, a fairy fort with hawthorn growing all around the bank. Sometimes it will be white um, blackthorn that will be growing there instead. And blackthorn's another one that, you know, has a very strong presence. But, um, yeah, definitely best not to disturb them, both the fairy fort and the hawthorn growing there. Actually, I really became aware of the the strong connection with it here, right here in Ennis actually, never mind Ireland or Clare, but right here in Ennis was. The very first winter I was in my clinic in Ennis County Clare and I was sitting, for some reason I, I was looking up the entry on Hawthorne in um, one of my herbal medicine encyclopedias which had been written by a um, wonderful uh, English herbalist who died um, about 10 years ago and um, called Thomas Bartram, should anyone be interested. And there was just a little footnote at the end of his entry in Hawthorne and it said Dr D Green of Ennis County Clare obtained an international reputation for treating heart conditions, keeping his remedy a secret and after his death his daughter revealed that his treatment was tincture of the ripe red was the Hawthorne berries and I was sitting in my clinic in Ennis County Clare and I got the shiver running, <laughs> running down my spine. <laughs> you know we have thousands of plants available to us globally to eat but sadly because of our processed diets we only eat a handful of plants and because of that we're missing out on a myriad of things. We also have a nutritional deficit and we have lost touch with getting all that nutrition that we should get from plants. My neighbours will tell me that they would have eaten wild garlic knowing that it was a natural antibiotic. Nettles are used as a blood purifier in the autumn or in the, in, the, in the springtime. And the hawthorn has its many virtues and uses and I use it as, a, as an incredible food source. I make the syrup. Um, because of, of our lost touch with, with plants, we also have a taste deficit. We have completely lost the taste of, um, of the wild and what real food should really taste like. And the, the leaves, the flowers and the actual fruits, the haws are all medicinal and they all on a physical level work on the heart but, it, it, but it, herbs are wonderful for supporting us emotionally and um, we don't have that from pharmaceuticals and we've a wide range of emotions and things that we go through um, as human beings and you know in terms of pharmaceuticals we've got antidepressants <laughs> which is you know they're quite a blunt tool I'm not saying they're useless and there's no need for them but they're quite a blunt tool we've, whereas we've got a much wider range of emotions and experiences that we have as human being, in beings and I find herbs invaluable for helping. White thorn or hawthorn, as I would call it, um, it makes up a fundamental part of our hedgerows. Our uh, and our hedgerows uh, are now probably one of the most important habitats we have in our countryside. Um, I suppose back in the, in the in the days we had a lot more woodland and forestry, uh, which is, has gradually been lost through to I suppose numerous different reasons. So now the hedgerows are uh, one of our main corridors and our main wildlife habitats. Uh, and if you look at any hedgerow, the hawthorn or the white thorn is uh, makes up, I'd say, the, the majority of those hedgerows. So by having it there, uh, it's 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 it blossoms obviously quite early in the year. Uh, so it's a vital source of uh, for pollinators such as bees. Uh, um, it's a native plant, which is important because our native uh, invertebrates and animals 
uh, are used to it, are adapted to it, and it will hold and be uh, a food source and a habitat for, for much more species because of that. Um, it is a, a vital nesting habitat, among, probably as important as a pollinator is a vital nesting habitat because of its thick, thorny, uh, and dense. Uh, it's a great uh, protective place for birds to nest. So we have uh, I, I recently looked and they reckon that uh, nearly 55 different species will use our native hedgerows. So you have thrushes, uh, blackbirds, you have wrens, you have all sorts of other common birds. So it's, it's of vital importance for that. Um, uh, as well as that, then you have obviously the berries, uh, which will be uh, which are, are important later on in the year uh, for as we're heading towards the autumn. And uh, um, then when you move away from uh, it has a home. It's 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 a it's a corridor. It links so many places in the countryside. Most animals uh, and birds don't like to open across open spaces, um, and unfortunately nowadays with intensive agriculture, we're losing uh, those wild areas that they can move through, and so they're becoming smaller and smaller patches. Um, so uh, these hedgerows with the hawthorn in it are, are vital uh, links between different habitats and so you have hedgehogs you have badgers you have foxes you have shrews mice you have all our small mammals will move up and down through these uh, hedgerows and, and they're vital and the, the hawthorn is a major part of that because it's a perfect uh, shrub it, it's quick grown it's thick uh, it's pretty during the summer um, and uh, uh, it's it's got that protection in the thorns you know so um yeah it's 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 one of our if not our most important hedgerow species i would say we're losing a lot of our biodiversity our bees are disappearing our butterflies are disappearing uh we are cutting down hedgerows we're doing a lot of things that maybe we shouldn't do we should think a little bit more about before we do it, because if we have that strong connection to nature, we're going to mind it. Not because of rules and regulations, but because we ourselves want to keep it that way. So yeah, I think it's very important. Thank you. I think it's really important to keep these traditions alive of using local plants as medicine and uh, food and all the other sources of material that they are. It's not that I think that everything that's ever been said or written down about a plant is automatically true, but loads of it is. <laughs> And it comes from a time where people couldn't nip out to the supermarket and buy stuff. I've got a lot of respect for um, what's come down to us. This is knowledge that's thousands of years old. Um, some of our most useful pharmaceuticals come from um, traditional knowledge. If we didn't have traditional knowledge about plants, then the simple fact is researchers wouldn't have a clue where to begin looking. Traditional sources tell us um, where to start looking and what to start looking for and there is such a buzz now in medical research um, around about plants and, and plant chemistry. Because we're not the same people who, um, we're not the same as the people who lived long ago and celebrated. So we, we have to find um, something new in the old traditions to make them relevant for ourselves. It's a tradition never stops. And we tend to lean back into those who went before us for tradition. Traditions, you could start a tradition today. And I think we need to be very dynamic and very involved with, with nature and with our trees and things if we want it to continue. We can't just rest on those who, before, who went before. At least now there is uh, something of a return. We, I think for a while, we were very busy uh, with jobs and, and careers and things that we turned our back to nature a bit. But we, 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 we we're reasserting our desire to be part of nature again. It's so important that we that we keep these sacred places and that we pass on the knowledge that I suppose a lot of us have. But um, I spend a lot of my time reading, but I also spend a lot of my time talking to my elderly neighbours and they will tell me about remedies and lovely things that they've used over the years. Um, and I feel that I, I, part of my work is to actually share my knowledge. So I bring the children from the little Moy Gwaleskull around the corner down here on, on walks. 
I bring out chefs, young chefs who are very enthusiastic about, I suppose, learning about wild plants and, and hawthorn and all the things that, um, as a food source. And um, so we have incredible knowledge, um, but we need to keep that alive and we need to share it and pass it on and, and record it in some way. And I suppose that's a beautiful part of this project. I tried to revive it by doing that, and I put it up to the and I put it up to the Lord this time. So it came along again. And I will do it again. I will continue to do it as long as I'm here. I will continue to do it. To try, to try and revive it. Yes, I will do it even better next year now. <laughs> if if, if the Lord left me here. <laughs> so I will. And why wouldn't he? <laughs> He's better. <laughs> <laughs>